various other risks is contributing to an additional risk that is what we are going to look at so from that perspective just getting started with uh, uh, a few basics around uh, correlation a typical thing that gets uh, covered is we'll look at uh, the concept of financial correlation what do i mean by it and what is the kind of risk that is driving it in which areas are we using correlations especially in finance almost all the major areas we are able to see we are using it in investments you will be using it in trading risk management uses the concept of correlation heavily the recent financial crisis can very well be attributed to correlation and even the regulators are mentioning the word of financial correlation as a part of their regulatory requirement so all these where all it is used in what context is something which we will look at and finally we will also see what is the relationship between the correlation and other forms of risk how is correlation linked with market risk how is correlation linked with credit risk how is it linked with systemic risk all these things we are going to look at right so just uh, getting started with the same whenever we use the word correlation it gets defined either as a static stuff or as a dynamic stuff when i say static yes i take one data set the other data set at one particular point i try to find out what is the kind of interrelationship that is a uh, present linear relationship that is present between this and this data set which are the relationship between two or more financial assets at a particular point in time i am computing that number on a regular basis and once it is computed it is the value that is associated with the correlation uh, i it's not changing with time when i'm saying 10 day value at risk it is computed by taking 10 days data at a time and uh, or probably a one single day value at risk is computed and that is multiplied by square root of 10 so this is uh, when i say static it doesn't move day over day and even even if it moves day over day it is it is computed for a for a period taken together right it uh, it's computed for a period taken together so probably even when we are talking about the original coppola approach for uh, uh, collateralized debt obligations the default correlations are calculated for a entire maturity period of the cdo it's not for uh, uh, today tomorrow changing so the correlation could be one defined on a static basis or it could be on a dynamic basis means on a daily basis i would be uh, seeing whether the correlation has really improved worsened gone up gone down two per two or more financial assets how they are changing on a daily basis on a regular basis that is what we are calling as dynamic correlation one of the important areas where we would be using this dynamic correlation is in pairs trading uh, as a part of trading we'll try to cover that pairs trading mechanism which is otherwise called as statistical arbitrage mechanism wherein i will see okay if uh, x and y are having very high correlation means generally if this is up this is also up but the day on which i see their correlation has worsened has gone down earlier let's say the correlation is 0.9 but on one single day i am seeing that the correlation became 0.75 then my strategy is i will buy the one that has performed lesser that has gone down and i will sell the one that has gone up with a simple assumption that the correlation will again go back to the previous level that is what we are calling as pairs trading we'll discuss about that pairs trading model uh, quite in a while from now 
Unlike that, there are a few other models, one called as a Heston model, which uh, looks at the correlation as a Brownian motion of the two assets. So the first asset being uh, the, the Brownian motion of the first one being dz1 of t, for the second one dz2 of t, the correlation is being looked at with respect to uh, uh, the Brownian motion of these two assets and this is again a standard normal distribution with a mean of 0 and variance of 1. So there could be a, a few stochastic correlation models as well. All these things, they are more and more dynamic in nature, not static ones. So we really need to know whatever, uh, whatever the correlation that we are measuring, is it a static correlation or is it dynamic? Now, what is this correlation risk all about? In financial world, we observe that because of the adverse movements that are there in the correlation between two or more variables, there is a financial loss coming up. A simple thing. Okay, let's say the correlation between the two assets is much lesser. Let's say it's 0.2. Now, what the portfolio management says, if the, co if the correlation between the two assets is much lesser, they form a good portfolio because they offer diversification, they reduce the portfolio risk, which is correct. But, as time progresses, the correlation between them could improve, could increase. 2.8. Then what is happening? Whatever this strategy which I have adopted thinking that it's a good portfolio, this is not becoming a good portfolio. This is becoming a risky portfolio because these two are moving in the same direction. They are not moving in the opposite direction. So that kind of losses which the companies are getting because of the adverse movements in the correlation between two or more variables we are attributing it to the correlation risk. So from that perspective, what is that we are saying? As the correlation of the asset returns is increasing, the risk of the financial loss is also increasing. Because as the correlation is lesser, they are becoming more and more diversified. It is becoming a much better portfolio. It is becoming a much better uh, asset to be added into a portfolio which will reduce the overall risk. But as the correlation between the assets is increasing, they are becoming more and more risky because both of them either give me a profit, both of them will give me a loss, which means the risk is uh, getting increased heavily. So that is uh, what we are calling as correlation risk. And what we have seen even in the recent financial crisis is when there is a systemic collapse, when there is a crisis in the economy, we see that the correlations between the assets are going to be much, much higher. In whatever was the correlation earlier, whatever was uh, the diversification benefit the two assets were giving earlier, during a financial crisis, we expect that the correlations will take a downturn. And uh, a few more things which could uh, also be understood is the correlation risk could also include non-financial variables. A few economic variables like uh, some kind of, uh, 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 some kind of uh, uh, economic crisis occurring, the whole financial markets all securities will move in the same direction or a political event creating political unrest in the economy almost all the stocks will show a downward turn a political uh, 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 positive almost all of them will show a kind of improvement so what we are typically are uh, saying uh, is not just the financial variables, even the economic and the political variables also could change the correlation between the two assets. Even there, we need to be vigilant of. Then, just as a simple example, let's look at uh, the credit default swap. 
now we know that in a credit default swap okay let's say a has issued a bond right so bond issuer a has issued a bond and b has invested in that particular bond now for b the risk is a will default now because uh, b is thinking that a will default it will purchase b will purchase a credit default swap which is like a protection on this being the reference asset so if a defaults c is going to reimburse the loss to whatever extent that a has defaulted c is going to reimburse that is what is a typical credit default swap and to make sure that uh, c is uh, reimbursing b is uh, continuously paying a premium to c and c will uh, reimburse the loss in case a defaults now think of how correlation is really impacting here now what should be the profile of c here who should be the c that i need to choose the c that i need to choose should be in such a way that a and c are uncorrelated or they don't have much correlation because if both of them are heavily correlated heavily positively correlated what can happen if a is not defaulting c also will not default but if a default c also will default then why the need i need to go what's the need for me to go for c for a protection so i have to choose c in such a way that a and c the correlation between them is much much lesser so what is where correlation is playing a role even in the credit default swaps and the spread that we really need to pay that is uh, 